Okay, so this is gonna start the maintenance series on the 2018 Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi. Okay, so what kind of kicked this whole thing off is I was looking over our Toyota 4Runner and the windshield washer reservoir, I could see that there was like a dipstick in it. Um, the bottle is clear, but it had like a dipstick. So you open it up and there was a little, little dipstick you pull out and you could see uh, what the level was. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. But I'm like, well, you really don't need it if it's clear. And uh, so that got me thinking, I'm like, well, I know on the Ram I can't see it because the, the bottle is black. And I'm like, oh, the overflow is the same way. And when I first got the truck, I looked and I'm like, well, I can't see anything in there. And the, the bottle is, and you can see the, the bottle is black, so you can't really tell. I'm like, well, that's strange. I'm like, well, whatever. So I pulled off the radiator cap and it was right up to the top. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to worry about it. So then when I came back and I had figured it out with the Toyota, I'm like, oh, that's what this is. Because I've never pulled this out, never looked in the owner's manual or anything. And there was this dipstick. So I pulled it out and lo and behold, there was nothing on the dipstick. So I went to the dealer to get the coolant. Uh, you only had the, the concentrate. So I ended up having to uh, mix it up. So now I have two gallons of coolant. So the plan is, uh, since I got a gallon and a half left, we'll drain a gallon out of the radiator. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. And then we'll dump a gallon of fresh uh, coolant into the system here. So when I had read read somewhere maybe someone commented on a video about how uh, uh this guy would i think he drained a gallon of coolant every year out of his radiator and put in a gallon of fresh and he said he'd never had to do a, a flush on the system because it was always kind of mixing in new every year and he never had any issues or anything so i'm like well it's not gonna hurt so we'll do that and then it got me thinking about other stuff and you watch a few videos and go on a few forums and there's a whole everything. Well, I knew the transmission should be done, even though it's considered lifetime. But then, you know, there's guys doing differentials and transfer cases. So we're going to do the whole works here. Like I said, it'll be a series. Um, this video is just going to be about the coolant. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't too worried about the, the level in the surge tank because this was full. So... I wasn't too concerned about that. I'm like, as long as the radiator's full, we should be okay. And the, the minimum on this is right at the bottom of the stick. So n not too worried about that. So let's, uh, let's hop into it here and see what we get. Okay, so what I got set up here is a gallon, uh, gallon jug with a funnel. And then I got a piece of vinyl hose there coming off of the bottom of the radiator there. All right, so this is hard to see. I'll see if I can point to it. So this here is where we're going to drain your uh, your pet cock, I guess the nut. So if you look at this, it looks like it's a nut, but it's hard to tell. There is a raised portion on here, so you can't put a socket on that. So if you have a uh, 5 ace, you can get it uh, where there isn't this raise. It's, it's raised on the top and the bottom here, so it's a... Uh, directly uh, at like 12 and 6 on this one so you can get from the side and loosen it or there's a hex on the inside and I put a 10 millimeter in there and that will also turn so you can get that either with a 5 ace or a 10 millimeter and then I just attached a piece of vinyl hose to the spout and you can see it's just running down to a funnel with a one gallon container okay so to do it I'm going to open up the radiator so we don't get any vacuum that way it should drain pretty well and then we will uh, loosen that up. Alright so I got my 10 millimeter hex in here and it's very snug probably from all the dirt so it's hard to get out but it's not very tight it doesn't take much to to break it loose there it seemed like it was pretty loose. I'm hoping everything drains through the hose um, sometimes that's not always the case. We'll see what we get here. Alright, so it looks like it's coming out here a little bit. And I haven't done this before, so we'll hopefully not end up with... Oh, there we go. It's just starting to drain. I should mention... There you go. 
Now it's draining full bore. I'm not gonna unscrew that the rest of the way because I don't know if that thing comes out of there. And if it would, we'd have a catastrophic mess. Um, I did do this on a cold engine, so I parked it in the, the shop here the night before, I left it cold. And uh, oh yeah, I can feel it popping through the hoses here. I'm hoping that we're draining off any sediment and stuff from the bottom of the radiator since it sat and it was cold. But uh, we'll see. So I'm just going to let that drain and we'll come back once it's full. Okay, so that's all I got out before it started spitting air. So we'll take a look at it because there's definitely a difference, difference in color here. And we'll also take a look at that, uh, the shutoff for the petcock. Alright, so when you close it, um, this mark I guess should be at the 12 o'clock position and you can feel it kind of goes into a detent so as you spin it back in it'll kind of go a little bit uh, more difficult a little bit more effort and then it kind of fits into like a like I said a detent you'll feel it kind of stop don't go any further than that you'll twist it off otherwise so let's take a look at the coolant okay so like I said that's all we could get out uh, the old coolant is on the right and it's kind of red in color uh, the new stuff is more purple. Now, like I said, I did verify with the dealer, with the VIN, to make sure that this was the correct coolant. And according to the book here, it doesn't give you a part number, but it says we recommend you use Mopar antifreeze coolant, 10 year, 150,000 mile formula, oat, organic additive technology. So, um, I was a little nervous here, so I quick, quick got the book once I started, saw it starting to drain and it looked a little different. And like I said, it says on the front here 10 year, but it doesn't say anything about the, the 15 or 150,000 miles. And then on the, uh, the back side here, if we look, uh, it says do not mix coolant types, use only 10 year coolant antifreeze uh, right here. So it says Oat Organic Additive Technology. So this is the... Uh, appears to be the correct coolant even though the color is different and I think I read somewhere online somebody had talked about if you do a coolant flush on your truck don't be surprised if the purple coolant you take out looks more red and who knows maybe uh, I don't know if that's just from it uh, being in the vehicle or if they use different colors I can tell you Ford keeps switching colors on us um, I work on Ford so I know a lot about the Ford stuff and I know it's just as stupid as this is. And the more we get into the maintenance on this RAM, you're going to see like some of the stuff is really dumb. And it, I don't think it's any different through manufacturers. They're making the, the general maintenance of the vehicle stuff just absolutely ridiculous. It used to be pretty simple that anyone could do it, and they're trying to make it that only the dealer can do it. So uh, let's get this filled up. All right, I did buy it from the dealer. I forgot to mention that. And the number it's got on here is the MS90032. And if you go to the back side, part number at the top there is going to be the the 681-638-48AB. I believe I can get that to focus. There we go. So I bought it from the dealer because the dealer had a better price and I could find it uh, online and I want to stick with factory fluids. Um, I did look again and I guess this coolant can range in color anywhere from orange, pink, purple, red. So uh, again, when you look it up on Amazon, if you put this number in, it'll come up with a container that looks like this, but it'll say 10 year, 150,000 miles, and it'll also say uh, like mixed or premix, and this is concentrate. So. Amazon is hard to buy parts from. Uh, a lot of the stuff is mislabeled, or they take a picture of a uh, container, but then the information doesn't always correlate with what they're giving you. The part number could be different. So, oh, that part number is on the front here, too. I just saw that now. So, this is the correct coolant. Um, we're going to put it in and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm just going to use a funnel and, and pour it in. Uh, I don't think you need to watch me pour it in, so we won't do that step. So I'll pour it in and then uh, we'll check it afterwards here. All right, so that's what I have left. If we take a look in here. So it's pretty full. I have been squeezing the top radiator hose here 
and I did get some air out and you could see it a couple times there'd be some bubbles coming up and then the level would go down a little bit come up and then there was one time where like it must have there was a decent sized air bubble because it dropped quite a bit um, I'm not sure because I didn't fill that gallon container all the way up I'm not sure how much I should have left I'm guessing that's probably about a quart so I'll, uh, I'll try to squeeze a little bit more in here otherwise uh, we'll start it up and run it so this is what I've been doing with the radiator hose, I just squeeze it and you see you'll get some air bubbles there. And I can feel that this hose has got coolant in it now too. But I just do this a couple times here and sometimes you get some, sometimes you don't. That level really hasn't gone down much. And it feels pretty full. I'll see about trying to figure out how much I actually took out here. All right, so I just took it around the block, got it up to operating temperature, and we're gonna let it sit. Um, it's always a good idea to check the level afterwards. If, uh, if you do have some issues uh, getting all the air out, the other thing you can try is just uh, starting the truck, letting it run, and then bring the RPMs up to like, I don't know, 1500 or so, and just leave it there for a few minutes to hopefully, uh, purge that air out. I know that's a, I believe that's a procedure Ford uses on uh, one of their trucks or whatever. Sometimes it can be tricky, you're just chasing air in the system, but this seems pretty good. We'll take a look at what I took out and uh, the amount we got left here. Okay, so that's what I got left. So the stuff on the, the right here, the red colored stuff is gonna be what I took out again. And uh, what I had left of the purple, I dumped back into the Mopar container. And I think it, the Mopar container had uh, just over two quarts in it. And then when I put the what I had left, I think it was quite a bit over three. Uh, I checked the truck again. It used just a little bit, so we're, uh, we were at about three quarts in the Mopar. But trying to compare that to a different size container is hard. So. I uh, dumped them both out and that's what I got so that should be exactly right then it looks like it's really really close so that should be good uh, the last thing I'm gonna say here before we wrap it up is if you're gonna do services and stuff I know sometimes it's easier just to do everything at once but uh, sometimes it's a good idea just to do one thing at a time kinda run the truck for a week and then do the next thing um, that way, if for some reason you're not sure of yourself on something you've done, you're not second-guessing everything that you've done, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I, I've seen guys like, oh, I'm going to do the, the differential, the transfer case, the coolant system, I'm going to change the spark plugs. Like, okay, you just did a, a ton of stuff, and if for some reason you missed a step or did something incorrectly on one of those, you could be giving yourself a major headache. So... Um, like I said today, it's just going to be the coolant. The next uh, upcoming video after that is going to be transfer case, which is a pretty straightforward uh, service. So, all right, that'll be it for now.